Good morning. How y'all doing? It's another episode of True Seeking Trucker. We're getting to our Father's Word in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 46. Let's begin with some prayer. Father, as we go through this uh, study, may we receive the message that you gave the prophet Jeremiah to give to us to understand what's going to happen in his end times. As 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 11 tells you, tells us that you showed us these things and these things were allowed to be to show us what was happening at this particular point in time. To understand that when we read the Bible, sometimes it's an overlay for end time prophecy and to be keen to that. May we take our time to digest this meal, to chew on it as a great meal that only could come from God. For us, the bread of life, Father, thank you again for waking this man up this morning. I'm a sinner of unclean lips. Would you give me an opportunity to serve you? And um, may all come to you. And uh, you offered your son for the atonement of our sins. And all shall come to Jesus Christ to cover the sins of the blood of the Lamb. Because only by doing that, Father, do we begin to really understand the Bible. Because after that, we receive, through the baptism of the Holy Spirit, we receive the knowledge of the Comforter. Father, give us eyes to see and ears to hear and a tongue to speak the truth and feet to walk the straight and narrow path to your Son, Jesus Christ. For he is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one shall come to the Father but through him. And this we pray that all men... And all women and all children come to know you. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Amen. All right. Let's get going. Sorry, I just woke up. Um, I did a long run last night. But you know what? When I wake up and I think about doing the... And I, and I roll out of bed, I go, you know what? If I put this off, who... Who's to say is a guarantee tomorrow that I'm going to be alive to do this, right? I take every day as my last day. 24-hour living, you know. I've learned to live it the fullest life through 24-hour living. This is the last 24 hours I have. Um, how am I going to serve God? How am I going to um, serve my family, um, my fellow man, and... uh that inspires me to get up, right? To, to put another day together. But all things are done by him and his strength, not by mine and my boastful. So let's get going. Chapter 46, verse 1. To recap what happened in prior chapters, some have decided to disobey God after they asked Jeremiah to speak to the Lord for godly orderly uh, direction and where to go at this point whether it be the will of god be pleasurable or bring affliction they would listen and then when jeremiah brought it to them saying stay in judah and plant and harvest and, and god will bless you um the ones there called jeremiah a liar servant of god right and uh this is this is what they've done they've they've disobeyed god and they went against his warning to not go into Egypt because you will die. And this is exactly what's going to happen. This is this is exactly God explaining to him, since you disobeyed me, you're, you know, this is how you're going to die. And uh, he told them the ways to be um, safe. It makes you wonder who, if there were um, people intermingled in there that weren't even uh, believers in God. They just uh, went there to um, try to lead the people astray. Verse 46, verse 1. The word of the Lord which came to Jeremiah, the prophet against the Gentiles. This is uh, talking against the Gentile nation, right? Which would be Egypt. Verse 2. Against Egypt, against the army of Pharaoh Necho, king of Egypt, which was by the river Euphrates, in Carchemish, which Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, in the fourth year, Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah. Now, Euphrates uh, is important in Bible prophecy, especially with the seals, um, the, the river um, drying up of the Euphrates. 
um, making a pathway for the end time battle of Armageddon and Book of Revelations. Also, the once it dries up, the four angels of uh, I believe to be of Daniel chapter seven. Those four angels are named the beast, just like Legion was with that possessed man, where they asked. Well, Christ asked, what is your name? And, and they said, we are legion for we are many. The beast is, uh, is, uh, is, is made up of four powerful demons. And you know this by uh, Daniel 10, 20, when Michael the archangel told Daniel after 21 days of fasting and praying that he just fought the prince of Persia and he's going to go fight the prince of Grisha. So let's us know that every um, evil empire that's not of God, that's antichrist, um, has a demonic uh, spirit behind it, um, pulling the strings. And so that's my opinion on who those four angels are. Are the four beasts of Daniel seven, and they and that's the name of them, the beast. And you can read about and believe in Daniel thirteen. All those four beasts are in one in Daniel, in Revelations 13, excuse me. Um, that's the famous mark of the beast. Um, and if you follow the numbers in, in uh, the Bible, because the Bible is divinely uh, brought to in order, 13 is a number of rebellion. So, <clears throat> verse three, back to Jeremiah 46. Order ye, ye the buckler and the shield and draw near to battle. For harness the horses and get up a horseman and stand forth to your helmets, furbish the spears and put the brigandlings, brigand grandins. The brigandins are the, like the coat of mail, right? They're um, they're coming. King Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon is coming, and you're going for battle. Five, wherefore have I seen them dismayed and turned away back, and the mighty one are beaten down and are fled space, a, a space. A page looked back for fear was round about, saith the Lord. This is the fog of war coming. This is the fog of war. This is uh, how chaotic it's going to be when the Chaldeans come. It's going to be like a force of nature. Right, because God told you in the prior chapters, Nebuchadnezzar is a servant of God right now. And again, First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 11 tells you he allowed this to happen so we would understand in end time um, prophecy what's going to happen in the end of times. <clears throat> now, people say, well, why did God uh, allow this for people to die? No, check, check it out. He gave people of Judah opportunity to do the right thing by surrendering. And don't let people uh, confuse you. If you've done the study chapter by chapter, verse by verse with Jeremiah with us, you understand that God gave them plenty of t uh, chances to do the right thing. And he would spare them even when they were sinned against them over and over and over and over again. These people are um, that turned against God are hard-hearted and their minds are um, turned against God. Why I think this? Because they went to idolatry and just like an obsessive compulsive disorder, um, demons were up in their ear, steering them away and they were listening to their own minds. Once you've went so far away from God, you can't even trust your own mind. That's why you have to trust the word of God, that it'd be the truth. And when it goes against it, you'll know that you've been influenced by the world and uh, and the world will steer you wrong, will steer you away from God. That's why they said the road to destruction is wide and many shall take it. Proverbs 21 and 31, the horse is made ready for the, for the day of battle, but the victory rests with the Lord. Remember that, remember that. Mighty men have nothing against uh, of the fervent prayer of a righteous man or woman. So when I say men and women, man 
I mean mankind, so that includes women. So I want you to understand, I know this is a, um, people are trying to uh, uh, cause division between men and women in this world. But in um, the Bible, when it says man, it means mankind, right? So that includes women as well. Just to you don't understand that it's the, they 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 rely on people's ignorance of the Bible to cause a wedge between you and God and His Holy Word. Verse six: Let not the swift flee away, nor the mighty man escape. Shall 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 sem, ha, They shall stumble and fall forward north by the river Euphrates. Okay, so the north always remember that that's where the judgment comes from. Always comes from the north. And I believe God's throne is in the north, right? And that's where Satan hopes to be, you know, on God's throne. But he, he's, he's already been defeated. Understanding that the Euphrates River has always been the border between Israel and Babylon, right? Israel being the kingdom of God and uh, Babylon being Satan's kingdom, meaning confusion. And that's what they want to do is confuse you. Verse 7. Who is this that, co that cometh up as a flood? Remember, flood means like an army that's charging on their on their um in their battle charge, right? Remember the beast that rises from the sea? That sea in Revelation 17, 15 tells you it's nations, tongues, and people, right? When you look, and I, and I brought up a, a point where I believe God, God showed me. If you look at the aerial photograph of the, of the earth at night, you'll see light everywhere that shineth on the earth, right? Doesn't that look like a sea? The aerial photograph of God looking down, it looks like a bunch of lights everywhere. And that's how God looking down, looking at us, looks like. And you're seeing it through the eyes of God. So understanding why that's why he reverences it as people, tongues, and nations, as, or excuse me, people, nations, and, um, and, and that being the sea and the flood being the armies whose waters removed as rivers. Verse eight, Egypt rises up like a flood and its waters are moved like the rivers. And he said, I will go up and I will cover the earth and I will destroy the city and the habits thereof. So Egypt's going to try to fight back. Verse 9. Come ye horses and rage ye chariots, and let the mighty men come forth, the Ethiopians and the Libyans that handle the shield, and the Lydians that handle the bend of the bow. So as we remember, as we remember um, during some of the studies of Daniel 11, um, what well, has a lot of to do with the, I believe, the military campaign of the Antichrist. It's very hard to, to Daniel 11 was extremely difficult for me. Um, I tried to break it down as best as I could. Um, these uh, campaigns, of uh, military campaigns that went on, um, I believe shall be the allies in the end time war Armageddon against Israel to take the city of Jerusalem, All right? Ezekiel 30, eight through 10. And they shall know that I am the Lord and I have set a fire in Egypt and when all her helpers shall be destroyed. This is Ezekiel speaking a second witness to God's uh, declaration that Egypt shall go down. In that day shall the messenger go forth from me in ships to make the careless Ethiopians afraid and the great plains shall come upon them as the day Egypt, for lo, it cometh. For thus saith the Lord God, I will also make the multitude of Egypt to cease by the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. So, this part in verse 9 of Ezekiel 30, verse 9, In that day shall the messenger go forth for me in ships. Now, Babylon wasn't known for being a sea-bearing uh, country. So, I believe this is some end time right here. The king of Babylon is going to gather these North African nations um, by force to fight against 
Israel. Right? That's what I believe. Now, this is a message to all people of Middle Eastern descent or North African descent that are in these countries. You don't have to follow this uh, campaign against Israel. God loves you. Turn to Christ and you shall be saved. He, God's not a respecter of persons. If you turn to Christ and you have to give your life for the Lord, he will resurrect you. Some, and, and we understand that in America, we are were, we were blessed. There's a lot of Christians that are being killed for what their beliefs are in the world. Believe this and understand this. And you'll, you'll begin to understand the, the faith you need to, um, um, you might have to, to have to, to get, to, um, to stand against the set end time deception. <clears throat> okay. Verse 10. For this is the day of the Lord God of hosts. A day of vengeance that he may avenge him for his adversaries. And the sword shall dev devour and it shall be a satiate or saturation made drunk with the, their blood for the Lord God of hosts has sacrificed in the north country by the river Euphrates. So this is when they said the day of the Lord, day of vengeance. This is coming too as well, the end times. So pay attention. Verse 11. Go up into Gilead and take balm, a virgin, the daughter of Egypt. In vain shall thou use many medicines, for thou shall not be cured. Verse 12, the nations have heard of thy shame, thy cry hath filled the land of the mighty man, has stumbled against the mighty, and they are fallen both together. So everything that they try is not going to work. Egypt's going to fall. Remember, God's cleaning house. Egypt should have not gotten involved with, uh, with Judah's uh, rebellion against Nebuchadnezzar. Right, and they're and God's cleaning house with them. God's not happy with them either. Verse thirteen: The word that the Lord spake to Jeremiah the prophet, how Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, should come and smite the land of Egypt. So this came to me as well during that great terrible day of the Lord. See, we're seeing right now an overlay of what's going to happen in the end time battle of Armageddon. There's going to be people that are going to come from the east, the north, and the south, and even by sea to go against Jerusalem. They're going to get surrounded. It's going to be, they're going to try to massacre them. You know, the devil's time is, is coming to an end. And he wants to uh, take out the, God's place that he loves so much, which is the land of Jerusalem and God's people for following him. And that includes Christians as well. We're under attack too. But, but remember, Israel is, uh, pay attention to Israel for a prophecy. And you'll see things come to pass. Joel 2, 31, 32. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. Remember the great and terrible day. Great for the ones who follow them, terrible for the ones who rebel against them. 32. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered from Mount Zion and in Jerusalem <clears throat> shall be deliverance. As the Lord has said, in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. This is those people that are the remnant that are in Jerusalem that are being attacked during this battle. Right? Some will be, are going to be, uh, there's going to be a lot killed. But the ones that remember to call the name of Jesus, he shall come and he shall defend them and he shall be victorious. Revelations 19, 14 through 16. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon the white horses. 
clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Those people following Christ with the with the clothes of fine linen, white and clean, are the saints of what they have the righteous acts that were given the the reward of wearing the fine linen. Fifteen, and out of the mouth goeth the sharp sword. That's Christ, and that which will smite the nations, and he shall rule them with the rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness or the wrath of the Almighty God. Christ is coming to rule like a, a warrior. Sixteen, and he hath on his vesture and his name written. King of King, Lord of Lords. And that's such a beautiful title, ain't it? Zechariah 12, 8 through 10. In that day shall the Lord defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and he, and he that is feeble among them at the day shall be as David, and the house of David shall be as God, as the angel of the Lord before them. Verse 9. And it shall come to pass in that day that I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. 10. And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and, supp and of supplication. And they shall look upon me whom they have pierced and have shall mourn for him as one mourneth for his only son. And shall be bitterness for him and, all, and as one that is the bitterness of his firstborn. So they shall know it was Jesus all along. The Orthodox Jews that denounce Christ, they don't teach Isaiah 53 in their synagogue, shall know that Jesus was the Messiah that came once and for all, because they will see the, the holes in the hands, the pierced places, and the piercing of the feet. Verse 14, back to Jeremiah. Declare ye in Egypt and publish Migdal and publish in Noph and in Tephanes. Say ye, stand fast and prepare thee, for the sword shall devour around about thee. God warned them the king of Babylon was coming. 15. Why are thy violent, valiant men swept away? They stood not because the Lord did drive them. 16. He had made many to fall, ye. One fell upon another, and they said, Arise, let us go again to our people, and to the land of the nativity from their pressing sword. Verse 17, They did cry there, Pharaoh, king of Egypt, is but a noise. He hath passed a time appointed. So the, ne the Pharaoh is only but a noise, a, a voice. He has nothing behind it. You know, it's kind of like a chihuahua in the face of a pit bull. All right, it's just it's going to be nothing to when it comes to um, being able to stand against King Nebuchadnezzar's army, the army of the Chaldeans. Verse uh, 18 As I live, saith the king, whose name is the Lord of hosts, surely as Tabar is among the mountains, as the Carmel by the sea shall be, shall he come again. Understanding that we're seeing some end time prophecy overlays right now. Nebuchadnezzar was not, they were not a sea bearing country, right? You got to understand that as part of um, their culture at that time. So we're speak, they're speaking things in, in the future sense. Verse 20. Egypt is like a fair heifer, but destruction cometh it coming out of the north. Um, you know, Egypt is like a pretty heifer, right? And what are they? A uh, cow, right? Harmless, pretty much. And, and you know, a fair is another word for uh, pretty, right? I've always had a thing, too, with, uh, and I'm not proud of it or nothing, but when I was younger and I used to fight, what came to mind is when I fought somebody and they didn't have any scars, they were all talk. And I used to fist fight a lot. But one with scars on their face, you know, they've been proven in battle. And that's the way I see it. They're, they're more of uh, keeping their faces and the beauty and the, and the beautification of themselves than actually being prepared for war.
And that's what I'm trying to get at. And the North always being the, uh, the judgment that came from from uh, from the God. 21. Also, her hired men are in the midst of her like fatted bullocks. For they also as turned back and are fled away together. They did not stand because the day of the calamity was come upon them in the time of their visitation. They got fat and lazy, right? It's kind of like me as a veteran. <laughs> when I got out of the military, I lost, I lost a, a measure of my uh, discipline because um, I have to make a living. I had to come back and, inter and come into the civilian world. So I'm not constantly practicing in the gun range, not practicing, um, you know, exercising my truck driver. So my discipline has got lacking. I got older and uh, it happens. I mean, I tried to do my best, but but these ones, they're they're more they're most disciplined are like the uh, the regular society or the regular uh, the civilian world. They're fat and lazy. Verse 22, the voice thereof shall go like a serpent. Understand, we're going to go back to the voice like a serpent. And continuing, for they shall march with an army and come against her with axes and a hewer of wood. So they're not going to even have the proper weapons of war. 23, they shall cut down the forest, saith the Lord. They cannot be searched because they are more than the grasshoppers or an immunable. And unnum excuse innumerable. So there'd be without number. Now that we're grasshoppers, locusts, right? In the um book of Revelations, the, the locust uh army are gonna be <clears throat> those Arab nations that rise against um uh, Jerusalem. And remember I said earlier about the Middle Eastern people, um, God's not respected for persons, stand down, don't be a part of that. And, and come to Christ and he shall save you, right? But you stand up, even if America was to stand up against Jerusalem, we'd fall too. You can't do that. You can't go against prophecy. You can't go against God's promises. Understanding that if we as Americans ever switched up against Israel, we'd be in trouble. We're no exceptions to the rule, right? So let's go back to that word of the voice of the serpent. Or excuse me, the yeah, the voice of the serpent. That strong reference is 5175 Nakash, right? Meaning the hiss of the serpent, right? So we all know who the serpent is in the Garden of Eden. I hope I hope you know that. Satan. Also, there's another word strong that comes up 5172. Um uh, it means to be enchanted. It means to be uh, divinely enchanted, right? Almost like a spell. And uh, so there is some kind of supernatural uh, um, power behind it, demonic power. Now, people will say, well, you know, the voice of the serpent, who is? Well, we're going to find out. We're going to, in the next couple chapters, that it's going to speak of Tyre. And I believe... Ezekiel 26, 27, and some of the 28 talk about the tires, meaning flat rock. Their rock is not our rock. Deuteronomy 32, the, the song of Moses, is going to be the victory song in um, Revelations when Christ comes back and, and um, conquers the enemies of God. So people may not think, well, there's... Uh, Everybody that's walking around is 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 a uh, human. No, they're not. Daniel two forty one, and where thou sawest feet and toes, part of potter's clay and part of iron, the kingdom of kingdom shall be divided, but there shall be in it of the strength of the iron. For as much as thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay. Excuse me, I think I got the wrong one. So what I read was from the statue of Daniel 2, right? And we're talking about the iron being Rome. So we're going to jump to verse 30, or excuse me, 43. And where thou sawest iron mixed with Maori clay, thou shalt mingle themselves with the seed of men. 
right? So there is something out there that's not the seed of men. Now, if you were to say this uh, 60 years ago, people would be like, oh, no, no way. Well, this is talking about some kind of other bloodline that's not of mankind. And we see this with this um, fallen angel agenda. Some people call them aliens. Some people call them fallen angels. I'll refer to them as both. Um, I believe they are the same. They, they counterfeit their names of the Bible so they can deceive people. But So it talks about a seed right here. Also in Genesis 3.15, God put a curse on the serpent. I will cause enmity between thy seed and the woman's seed. What are the seeds? This is bloodlines, right? Understanding. I know it's in your face. People will try to say, well, I've got... God doesn't mean that literal. I'd never take away from the literal and I never take away from the allegory. Why? Because I believe seeing things through the literal is liter is seeing things through the flesh world that we live in, but also God tries to give us spiritual eyes to see things in the allegory. So you cannot take one from the other and and for me to understand the Bible. Um, but they shall not cleave one to another as iron is mixed with clay. So understanding that um is as well right we're dealing with different bloodlines what is big and then in genesis um uh, two thirteen says and the lord god said unto the woman what is it that thou hast done and the woman said the serpent beguiled me and i did eat so this is the, the um deception that came upon adam and eve to rebel against God. That word beguile means to charm or enchant. I believe that the devil uses an, uh, a type of witchcraft um, supernaturally to do evil. Right? Now, this in end time prophecy, Matthew 24, 26, um, that's why God says not to, or Christ himself says not to um, um, go back when people say, and I'll just read it, verse 26, Matthew 24. Again, so I don't confuse you. Matthew 24, verse 26. Wherefore, if thou shalt say unto the behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chamber, believe it not. 27, for his lightning is coming out of the east, which will be come from Babylon, and shall shine it even to the west, and he shall also as the coming of the Son of Man be. So he's going to he's gonna mimic the return of the Son of God, right? Do not believe it. Why? Because he's we're dealing with supernatural, um, supernatural powers, right? He's going to enchant us. That's why we can't even go and look, be in his presence, because we're going to get deceived. We're going to feel good. We're going to be like, oh, yeah, he's going to come with flatteries. And, you know, that's, oh, wow, that must be God. We feel so great. Well, you know, the devil can make you feel good, too, before he shoves a knife in your back. All right, so don't go on feelings, go on facts. Um, Jeremiah 17, 5, Cursed be the man that trusteth the men, and maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth from the Lord. Remember who we serve. That locust army again, that in Revelations, I believe 6, is going to be, have a, a leader, right? Give me one second to get there. I know we're getting into, um, sometimes the Lord puts it on my heart to bring things up right in the middle of, uh, of the Bible study. And I just trying to be obedient. I hope I'm not, um, hope you guys are sticking with me. So, uh, Give me one second. Okay. Come with me to Revelations 9. Real quick. Revelations 9, verse 2. Excuse me. Go to verse 1. We'll start. Revelations 9, verse 1. And the fifth angel sounded when I saw a star fall from heaven. Star is another name for angels. Unto earth and to him is given the key of the bottomless pit. To and he opened the bottomless pit. And there arose a smoke out of the pit, as a smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air was darkened by the reason of the smoke of the pit. 
verse 3, and it came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given the power of the scorpions to have the power. So, right here, we were given um, also understanding that this locust army shall come from the bottomless pit, and they're going to have a leader. And go jump to verse 11, and the king over them, right, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but also in the Greek tongue, name is Apollyon. That's like Ap Apollyon. Uh, Apollo, right? This is the name of Satan. If you do, if you go into both the Hebrew and the Greek to understand that name, it's going to say eternal ruin. And eternal ruin name is the son of perdition. Like in 2 Thessalonians, again, the 2 Thess Thessalonians, chapter 2, verses 3 and 4, Satan is that son of perdition means eternal ruin. Like you can read about in Ezekiel 28. He is judged to dam be damned. God just hasn't um, invoked his judgment on him yet. Right? And um, he's going to uh, go into the Holy Land and act like he's God, with Jesus. And um, he's going to magnify himself like, he as, like as God. And um, you could read that for the... Um, direct uh um matter of fact i'll just read it for you sorry i i uh i just woke up when i wake up i'm a little <laughs> a little tired but where are you at second thessalonians here we go So, Second Thessalonians, chapter two, verses three and four. Let no man deceive you by any means, for the day shall not come except there coming a falling away first. It means the great apostasy, falling away from Christ, and a man of sin shall be revealed, the son of perdition. That's the devil. For number four, who opposes and exalted himself above all that is called God. He's, you know, pride. That's what he fell from. He never got rid of it. And that is worshiped. And so that he is God sitting in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. And that's been his own purpose since the beginning. To be greater than God. To take the throne from God. He thinks he can win. Right? That's what pride does. It gives you unreasonable uh, expectations. So... Oh, we got one more uh, slide. Okay, good. Got a little off track. Let's go to um, verse 24. Okay, verse 24. The daughter of Egypt shall be confounded, and he shall be delivered into the hand of the people of the north. And the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, saith, Behold, I will punish the multitude of No and Pharaoh in Egypt with their gods and their kings, even Pharaoh and all them that trust in him. That includes the people of Judah that fled to Egypt. 26. And I will deliver them into the hand of those that seek their lives, into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, into the hand of his servants. Afterward shall be inhabited as in the days of old, saith the Lord. 27. But fear not thou, O my servant Jacob, and be not dismayed, O Israel. For behold, I will save thee from far off, and thy seed from the land of their captivity, and Jacob shall return and be in the rest of ease, and none shall make it him afraid. 28. Fear thou not, O Jacob, my servant, saith the Lord. For I am with thee, for I will make a full end of all nations whither I have driven thee. But I'll make a full end of thee, be but correct thee in measure. Yet will I not leave thee wholly unpunished. So, correct yourself before you wreck yourself. All right? And uh, that's basically uh, what this chapter, the context is, you know, going against God. What What is the uh, result of going against God? It's uh, death, right? But those who go to Christ, 
shall receive eternal life. You don't must be born again, right? God bless you. Take care and have a great rest of your day.